Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, you get to see how my impulsive decision took me down the circuitous path of needlessly complex and potentially less reliable. I'm not sure this was wise, but I'm here and this ball is rolling, baby. You're looking at boost for the 61 Apache. I've been watching Matt Happel of Sloppy Mechanics fame and falling in love with what you can accomplish with a turbo. So a while back, I ordered the Denma Billet 7875 Turbo Kit from vsracing.net. Kit comes with a 7875 Turbo. Intercooler, piping, couplers, oil feed, drain, blow-off valve, wastegate, everything you think you need, all for the princely sum of $1,100 US. To be honest, you can't get a cam, heads, and headers that can even come close to the power this turbo can produce for that kind of money. So that's what I did, because I'm stupid. I usually bookend my wonderful ideas with, because I'm stupid, and this might be one of them. Factory manifolds can handle upwards of a thousand horsepower, so there's no need to do anything else. Lots of people use them, and while many just flip the manifolds forward and swap them side to side, that became a packaging issue with my power steering, as well as made the location of the flanges kind of useless for me. I, I didn't like the look of it. I chose to run the driver's side down and back as normal, and I flipped the passenger side upside down and sent it forward. To easily connect and disconnect everything, I chose to run V-band clamps welded to the cast manifolds. Now, many people say you can't weld to cast, but these manifolds are cast steel, not cast iron, so they should theoretically be weldable. A smart welder would do pre- and post-heating for their welding, while others have just reached for the MIG welder and given her, and it's worked out fine. I opted to heat the manifolds in my powder coating oven, I tigged them with 309L rod and then cooled it slowly in the oven afterwards. It's pretty hot taking it out of the oven. I'll give you a nickel if you like it. No? You do it for free. Oh, okay. All right. The next challenge was to figure out where the turbo would go and, more importantly, how to hold it while I fabricated all the piping. But when you're trying to figure this out, lots of ideas go through your head and most of them will suck, but you'll figure that out after only a large number of hours of messing with it. My best idea was to hang the turbo off of my engine crane and then fabricate a support bracket off the cylinder head. Uh, the hot side of the turbo is done in 409 stainless. There's lots of discussion about how big the piping should be. Coming out of the exhaust manifold is two and a half inch, uh, but a lot of guys say you'll get better spool if you go two and a quarter or maybe even two inch just to get the exhaust moving quickly and keeping the intensity of the heat all together. I did the hot side in two and a quarter, 409 stainless. 409 uh, apparently expands about the same as steel does. So theoretically, it should be less prone to cracking. I, you want to avoid crack. Just say no to crack, especially in pipe. No crack pipe. You'll notice I'm not using any back purging to weld this. Stainless really wants to be surrounded with argon when you're welding or you're going to get sugaring on the backside. It kind of looks like barnacles and it's not good. Uh, but you're correct. I'm not back purging anything here with more gas. But I am using Solar Flux B, which is a powder that you mix with alcohol. You paint it on the backside of the weld and it protects the weld and keeps it from sugaring. And it totally works. Smells like dirt though, this stuff, which is a bit weird. But, you know, I like to stay down to earth when I'm welding. Can you dig it? <laughs> Here you see one of my many mistakes. I'm welding on a wastegate. The wastegate is used to control the turbo boost. When the turbo reaches enough boost, uh, the boost pressure goes to the wastegate, which opens it up and releases the exhaust gases so they don't go through the turbo, kind of bypasses the turbo. Kind of like greasy food in my bowels. It's... So it, it opens and bypasses, and where you place it is where you want the exhaust to want to go out the wastegate. You don't want it to be an unnatural movement. You want the exhaust to easily be persuaded to go out the wastegate. So I placed it here because it made sense, but once I had the whole thing assembled and modeled up, it really didn't, it didn't really look good. It, it wasn't really in a good place in the engine bay. So I ended up um, plugging that port and moving the wastegate to another area. 
The output of the turbo is three inches in diameter, but I want to run a four inch downpipe because turbos really want as little back pressure as possible. Kind of like after the chili cheese enchilada burrito platter, you want as little back pressure as possible. Um, there's internet lore out there that says a naturally aspirated engine needs to have some back pressure, but they're wrong. An engine doesn't need to have a little back pressure any more than you need to be a little constipated. What the engine needs is scavenging. Scavenging is where the exiting exhaust kind of helps to siphon the new air and fuel charge into the cylinder during valve overlap. Valve overlap is when the ex exhaust valve is closing and we've already started opening the intake just to give it a bit of a head start. When the two valves are actually both open, they're overlapping and we can use the exiting exhaust to help that. On a turbo, we're using the hot pressurized exhaust to spin a turbine and once it goes and does its work at the turbo, we don't need anything in its way at all and any back pressure in the exhaust system could restrict how well the turbo works. So, four inch, four inch is sweet. I was able to buy a length of four inch tube for not much more than a single mandrel bent U, making it turn a corner as easy as pie. Pie cuts, that is. If you like pies, leave a comment below with your favorite pie. In fact, you know, I, I don't do a birthday cake anymore. I, I don't really like cake. I like pie. So on my birthday, my wife bakes me a deep dish apple pie. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. The candles don't stick in it very well, but you know, I like eating the pie, so it's all good. So with a ton of pie cuts, yeah, we put her all together. I also welded in some uh, O2 bungs so I can put the factory O2 sensors back in the factory locations, but I put a third one on the turbo output, which I'll be running a wideband uh, oxygen sensor for tuning. Anyways, V-band clamps, and in all honesty, these V-band clamps are the devil. Oh my gosh. They seem cool, they sound awesome, but they're, they're awful to work with, and nothing lines up, and then you gotta get all of them lined up, and oh my gosh. And then you clamp them on super tight, and I don't know if you know this, but they don't come off that easily. So, yuck. Anyways, trimming a bit of the inner fenders to clear everything, getting the exhaust sneaked around. And the nice thing about the pie kits is, is you can have these curves kind of, you can clock the turns to clear things a whole lot better than if you're doing uh, mandrel bent use. So it's kind of neat. Tedious and time consuming, but they do also kind of look sexy. The wastegate dumps back into the uh, the downpipe of the exhaust and because stuff moves when you weld it I welded everything up and clamped it hooked up the wastegate and clamped it made the connection from the wastegate to most of the way of the downpipe and then welded the last bit together while it was all on the truck that way all of its warping and moving and changing when I'm not looking is done and then I can just cut a piece that just fits, weld it in place, and, um, and then Bob's your uncle. You know my uncle, Bob? Yeah, he, he's, he doesn't like you. I'm kidding. I don't know your uncle, Bob, even if he doesn't like you. All right, I run out of things to say, and you're just going to watch me weld for a bit. I could tell jokes. I got a joke. Here's a joke. Um... Bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve tachyons here. Tachyon walks into a bar. All right, all right. Um, let's just play some music because I work best with music. Here we go.
All right, making the intercooler fit, we had to cut a fair bit out of the rad support. Took the X out of it and then sunk the uh, intercooler in enough to make it fit behind the front nose piece of the truck as well as the grill. And it all seems to fit. Made patterns of what the sheet metal should look like out of cardboard and welded her in. Ground it smooth. I made little kind of tabs on the bottom that would hold the bottom of the intercooler. Simple little bracket up at the top. And I'm thinking in my head about how I'm going to attach the engine oil cooler, the transmission oil cooler, and the air conditioning condenser. The exit of the turbo, pretty sure it's two and a half inch tubing, and the in entrance to the intercooler is three. So in my head, it made sense to just continue the same diameter out of the turbo and then have it step up to the inlet of the intercooler rather than open up right after the turbo. It made sense. It probably won't make any difference at all. Whole thing's aluminum, TIG welded together, and uh, yeah, it went really quite nice. Masking tape's pretty cool at holding stuff together, but uh, it doesn't handle heat all that well. Leave a comment below if you can't handle heat all that well. Subscribe if heat can't handle you. I haven't decided if I'm going to take all of this apart and polish it all nice and bling or just leave it. I mean, my engines are clean when I put them together, and uh, I don't always clean them afterwards. So, I don't know. For the first car show, maybe. All goes together pretty good. The other side was a little, it was a bigger pipe because I went 3 inch coming out of the intercooler and took a little bit of trimming more aggressively than I really wanted to, but I need to cut the hole bigger so I can actually remove that tube. But the, once you get the shape and the length and the size all exactly the way you want to go, it's the same thing. Hold it down with masking tape, splash it with some acetone, TIG weld it with just the right settings of electrode negative and frequency and all of that, and then go for it. Uh, weld's nice. This one's a very, very easy bend. It only turns around in one plane, so it's pretty easy to do. This tube is where I chose to put the blow-off valve. Uh, there's a couple different philosophies. Some folks think you need to put the blow-off valve right by the throttle because that's what closes and everything backs up to that. Other folks say put it right after the turbo because it's the turbo you're trying to protect. So, eh, there's a lot of options. I chose before the throttle because it, I, it, I, I, that's what I chose. Here's one of my significant mistakes. Uh, this is the oil drain into the oil pan, but lo and behold, the, the threaded hole that I put into the pan lines up beautifully with the motor mount and none of my AN fittings would clear the motor mount. So I picked up a 90 degree NPT to AN fitting adapter. My supplier, local supplier, didn't have a 45. I know you can get a 45, but I hacksawed it and machined it and then welded her back down to a 45, which worked sweet. That with a 45 degree AN, I got the hose out of there just fine. Then discovered that the oil drain out of the turbo was pointed in the wrong direction because of the way I clocked the turbo. So I had to cut it apart, extend it two inches, weld it together, and now my oil drain glory is fantastic. And we're ready to go. Thanks for watching. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. I'm here all week. Be sure to tip your waitress.